always do. Do what I do. Same thing you always see. Danny Garcia going there, great show, great fight, and get this W. And what's the message then you send it to the 154 pound division? Because it is going to be your first fight at this weight. What's Definitely. the message you send in them Saturday night? You know, we're showing we're here. We're here. We're here. We ain't going nowhere. Jose, same thing to you. Message, message you send it to the 154 pound division. They're going to see it. They're going to see it come out. Like I said, I'm not going to say much. Check. Do, do it matters? 54, 60, 40. 47. <laughs> Come on, Jack. I, I got it, Angel. How many fights you had again? But that is what we've got here, folks. I don't know what's going on with my camera color. What's going on, guys? We got the uh, weigh-in that's going to be starting in uh, four minutes for tomorrow night's card. I'm kind of hyped for it. Uh, tomorrow night on Showtime, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can see it right there. It's going to open up with uh, Gary Antoine Russell taking on Francis Bartholomew. I got Gary Antoine Russell unless... Bartholomew tries to stink it out. Don't be surprised if you see a draw. Then you got the return of Adam Kwanowski taking on Ali Aaron uh, Demarezin. Um, basically, Adam Kwanowski's first fight back after being stopped twice by Robert Herlinius. He just re-upped and signed a new deal with PBC. Um, Ali Aaron Demarezin, he has wins over... He lost to FA Jogba a few years ago, several years back. Unanimous decision. And he's got a win over Michael Sprott. Ill. And Kevin Johnson, ill. And Gerald Washington. So he only has one defeat on his resume. Um, and that's the FA of Jogba. And then, of course, you got Danny Garcia making his full official debut at 154 pounds against Jose Benavidez Jr., who made his debut at 160, his last fight, where he weighed in at 157 and lost to the dude. A lot of people thought he lost, even though it was a draw. To here, let's go look at this face off real quick since you're here before the weigh in starts. We're going to be here streaming during the main event tomorrow night. Um, For some reason, okay, I got Danny Garcia. But for some reason, I think that Jose Benavidez ain't going to make it easy. And he could possibly win. The only problem is he has no lower body movement because of that bum leg he has. He got shot several years back, really fucked up his career. I used to be really, really high on him. Um earlier in his career he had a lot of good stories coming out of sparring between him and what um i believe sean porter and definitely he was in uh, manny pacquiao camps but overall you know I, I i look at him as being a good fighter i look at the last fight against uh, ricardo torres as a stutter step but i think i rated this card yesterday what did i rate this card yesterday did i rate it a b or a b plus when i gave my uh this is a B card. Oh, the way in's about to start. Hold on, the way in's about to start, as you can see here. Wait, wrong screen. There we go. But, you know, Danny, at 147 pounds, was never really too high on him. He lost the big fights, you know, that he was in between Keith Thurman and Sean Porter and won the fights he was supposed to win. Keith Thurman, Thurman, Sean Porter, and Errol Spence, and won the fights he was supposed to win against guys like Ivan Redcheck, Red Catch, Adrian Granados. You know, but overall, overall, one fifth them one fifty four pound pounders are big. For example, why is my color? I'm looking all like red. What is going on with that? I'm gonna try to fix that um, when the weigh-in starts. But anyway, um. I'm not a fan of Danny Garcia, you know, this run at 154 pounds. For example, just imagine him versus undisputed champion right now, Charlo. You think he can beat Charlo? I don't think so. I think Charlo will probably stop him. You know, like Charlo, listen, he, uh, he's underrated in a lot of uh, circles that, you know, he shouldn't be underrated in. But dude, it's hard. I even think that Danny Garcia would have issues with Tony Harrison. I just think that Danny Garcia is too small. I think, you know, he's one of those guys that you can't really consider him necessarily a big 147 pounder either. But he's definitely a small 154 pounder. I got a chance to watch an interview that he did with uh, Kate Abdo where he was talking about um, in the Spence fight or going into the Spence fight, he had an injury the way in starting. That's what this is right here. This is uh, the live feed. He was talking about how he had um, a tear in his shoulder going into the Spence fight. And then he had a, a, a fracture, a hairline fracture on his chest or one of his ribs or something like that. 
You know, so he's saying he had two injuries. I'm not saying that the result would be different if he was fresh. He also said that he had said that he had a 10 week camp and that he weighed um, before he started camp. He weighed in at 184 pounds. But, you know, fighters are known to, you know, like blow up. Jose Benavidez said before his last fight, he was up in the 200s. Crazy. But, you know, I just don't, I'm, I'm not sure about Danny at 154. You know, that power, you know, Danny's power at 140 and 147 is, is, is unquestioned. But at 154, hey, let's turn it up. We're going to watch the weigh-in, talk about it a little bit after. Uh, take your time out while you're here to like the video and subscribe. Remember, the card's going to be starting on the Showtime YouTube page at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to open up with Vito Malnicki versus, uh, here, let me, let's listen in. By TGB Promotions, DSG Promotions, and Showtime. Well, fans, we'll begin our weigh-in with our Showtime Boxing Countdown program. I was going to start talking about Castaño. I was going to talk about him. We're going to talk about him a little after the um the weigh in. Traction on our Showtime Boxing Countdown program features welterweight scheduled eight rounds of boxing. At this time, please welcome the fighters as they make their way to the stage. First, the tough battler from New Haven, Connecticut. Please welcome Jimmy Williams. This is who's fighting Sergei Derevianchenko on the uh, Showtime YouTube page. And his opponent, we welcome to the stage at this time, young rising boxing star oh, from no, Roseland, New Jersey, White Magic, Vito Milnecki Jr. My bad. Derevianchenko's fighting some dude, John Connolly, I believe his name is. Still at this time, welterweight scheduled eight rounds of boxing, and now with... 18 wins, 8 losses, and 2 draws. With 6 wins coming by way of knockout, here is Jimmy Williams. On the scale, Jimmy. You heard him, Jimmy. Get your ass on that scale. Stop screwing around. Jimmy Williams weighs in at 153 pounds. 153. And his opponent with a record of 11 wins, one loss with one, seven wins coming by way of knockout, rising young star of boxing, white magic, Vito Milnicki Jr. One hundred fifty-three and three quarter pounds. One fifty-three and three quarter pounds for Vito Milnicki Jr. How do you feel PBC has been doing with prospects as of the last like four or five years? They went down a little bit, in my opinion. Like, look at guys like Richardson Hitchens. Like they built up a lot of guys and then all of a sudden like their newer guys don't seem to be getting like the build up like they used to. Hello. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, streaming live on a Showtime Sports YouTube channel, the Showtime Boxing Countdown program. Vito Milnicki Jr. versus Jimmy Williams. Super welterweights, eight rounds of boxing. And we continue with our official weigh-in for the Showtime Boxing Countdown program. This time we move into the middleweight division. Please welcome to the stage at this time with a record of 17-3-1 with 11 knockouts. Please welcome Joshua Conley. To be honest, I think Sergei Derevianchenko kind of cooked. You know? I really have no prediction on um, Valnicki. Um, and um, Jimmy uh, Williams. Williams does have a pretty solid resume, though, win or loss. So this is a step up for Malnicki, especially since he um, had that uh, slip up. What was that last year?
160 pounds, even 160 pounds for Joshua Conley. J-Rock Williams was supposed to be on this card, and then he got taken off. And his opponent, a former that. world title challenger from Brooklyn, 13 and 4 with 10 knockouts, the technician Sergey Derevanchenko. Remember, he's in desperate need of a win. What has he lost? Three big fights straight. 159 and a half pounds. 159 and a half pounds for Sergey Derevianchenko. Word is he's trying to get down to 154 and pursue some fights there, but I don't think he's going to do well. I'm not high on Derevianchenko, to be honest. You know, he's a gatekeeper-ish type of fighter. And he's shown that. You know, it's not like he hasn't had big fights. Yeah, he's laid some hands on uh, Danny Jacobs and uh, punched uh, Golovkin right in the stomach until that fucking referee got in the way. But that's about as high as he's going to go, in my opinion. Still, always in good fights, though. He even headlined a pay-per-view. Can you believe that? The trouble doubleheader. Crazy. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, streaming live on Showtime Sports YouTube channel. Ten rounds of boxing, middleweights, the technician, Sergei Derevyanchenko. It's a showcase fight. That's all this is for Derevyanchenko to get a win under the belt. All right, fans, here we go from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Premier Boxing Champions presents and continues with the weigh-in for the opening attraction on our Showtime Championship Boxing telecast. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Brought to you by TGB. I don't think he beat Golovkin. I had it about a draw. And a showtime. Our opening and I definitely don't think he beat Jacobs. Scheduled 10 rounds of boxing. Welcome to the stage at this time from Havana, Cuba, by way of Las Vegas, the former two division champion of the world. Wasn't I at the Danny Jacobs fight? Bartelemy. I think I was at that fight, wasn't I? What's Danny Maryland Jacobs' fight that I go to? Maryland hard hitting rising super lightweight contender, the undefeated Gary Antoine Russell. I'm going to say it right here, right now. This is the only fighter I will say I'm happy to be called a hater. I want Francis Bartholomew to get knocked out. Two-division world champion, Kid Blast, Rances Bartholomew. I don't like him. 139 and a half pounds, 139 and a half pounds for Rances Bartholomew. And I always hated his stupid hair. He used to be stupider before. But I hope Gary Russell put a boot in his ass. The outstanding family boxing tradition, undefeated at 15 0 and 0 with all 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Onto the scale at this time, the Southpaw talent, undefeated Gary Antoine Russell. By the way, I got some questions for you guys. What do you guys want in a podcast? Like, what's the number one thing you hate in podcasts so I can know not to do that shit? Stop grabbing your dick, bro. Already 137 and three quarter pounds. 137 and three quarter pounds for Gary Antoine Russell. I do not like Rancid Bartholomew. I call him Rancid. Rancid Bartholomew. I can't stand him. Him and his brother Luton, too. He's cool, but I just can't stand him because of his brother. This is how I think this fight's going to go. Either Rance, Rancid's going to get his ass knocked out, or Bartholomew's just going to he's just going to dance the night away. Like he'll do that shit. He will. He will make it a stinker. I hope he gets put to sleep safely. Safely, you know. I'm going to wake up and go back home to his family and think about what he's done to us for all these years. He's listed as uh, 37 years old, by the way. I hope so, Peter. I hope so. I'd be so happy. You'll see. Look at my watch my post fight video. Tomorrow. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. Our opening special attraction on Showtime Championship Boxing: Gary Antoine Russell versus Rances Kid Blast Bartelemy. Ten rounds of boxing. Super lightweights in the ring. Watch my post fight video. You're gonna see the joy in my face. I'm going I might be going to sleep, 
Sometimes I tend to probably pass out maybe halfway through a card. Well, fans from Barclays Center event. here in Brooklyn, New York, premier boxing champions. But if he gets his ass knocked out, I'm going to be so happy. I want to know how much uh, Adam Kwanowski is going to weigh. Please welcome to the stage our heavyweights in our co-main event of the evening. First, originally from Turkey, now fighting out of his home of Hamburg, Germany. The Turkish Olympian and current heavyweight contender, Alieren Demerizan. Demerizan. Okay, there we go. We're going to call him that shit. Jimmy and and his down. opponent. Originally from Womja, Poland, now fighting out of Brooklyn. Here is the popular heavyweight contender. Here is Adam Kownoski. Adam Kownoski weighed in for his last fight at 258 pounds. That was last October against a Robert Hellenius in which he was stopped in round six. And it's time to bring our heavyweights to the stage at this time. First with a record of 16 wins, one loss with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. The heavyweight contender known as the Iceman Alieren de Medicine. He weighed in at 262 his last fight. 262 and three quarter pounds. 262 and three quarter pounds for the Same Turkish weight. Olympian Alieren de Medicine. Yeah, my bad. It was a little bit of lag. And right now there. stepping up to fault. the scale with a record of 20 wins, two losses, 15 Dude, wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the all action popular heavyweight, the baby faced assassin, Adam Kovnuski. All right. He weighed in at 258, his last 251 and one quarter pounds. 251 and one quarter pounds something. for Adam Kovnatsky. That's the lowest he's been since 2010, where he weighed in at 231. Let me tell you something. The highest he's been has been 266. His last fight was 258. That's some shit right there. And you know he's got fast hands for his size. That's a really, really good sign. He's skinny fat. That's kind of like my body, except I don't got that belly overhang. For females, they call that the stomach pussy. They like you lift that shit up. It's some good shit under there. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. It's the co-main event of the evening. The big man of the sport, heavyweight, scheduled ten rounds of boxing. The baby-faced assassin, Adam Kovnatsky versus Alieren de Medicine. By the way, this show is for mature audiences only. Sorry for the um, occasional lag. I don't know why. All right, fans, here we go things. from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Premier Boxing Champions presents the official weigh-in for the featured bout of the evening. Once again, brought to you by TGB Promotions, DSG Promotions, and Showtime. Welcome our fighters to the stage at this time. First, fighting out of Seattle by way of Phoenix, Arizona. He's the battle-ready contender, the very exciting Jose Benavides Jr. I'm just concerned about that one leg, man. And his opponent fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, Never here's the two-division champion of the world, Danny Swift Garcia. Let's bring our fighters to the scale at this time. Super welterweight special attraction scheduled 12 rounds of boxing. First to the scale with a record of 27 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 18 knockouts. The exciting yeah, former world screen. title challenger, current contender, Jose Benavides Jr. One hundred fifty three and three quarter pounds. One fifty three and three quarter pounds for Jose Benavides Jr. Don't Jose Benavides look like Sicario? And now to the scale. With a current record of 36 wins, three losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout, he'll be making his super welterweight debut. Here is the former two-division champion of the world, the popular Danny Swift Garcia. 152 and three-quarter pounds, 152 and three-quarter pounds for Danny Swift Garcia.
Yeah, I'll take that money. I need that. What was that? That was about $400, wasn't it? And they're going to leave it? Look, they all want it. I'll take it. Look, he's going to take it. You know, gas is high as shit. Wait a minute. It's a bill missing. Somebody put a bill under their foot. They're going to drag it back with them. I know all the tricks. I used to be a troubled ass youth. You see them, them ass clowns throw money in the club. I stuck my my 12 Timberland right on that joint map. Drag that joint right back to the bathroom. But Danny weighed in comfortably below the 154 pound limit. Ooh. I'm starting to feel it. I'm getting hype. It probably was TB that took that $100 bill. That's TB in the back. Him and Tony Harrison are friends. And the there they are, maker. ladies and gentlemen. Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds in a super welterweight special attraction. Danny Swift Garcia versus Jose Benavides Jr. Ooh, the crazy eyes. Sakara, your eyes. Sakara, your eyes. All right, let's talk about the card. That's it. I'm hype. You know, I do admit, you know, I want to, um, you know what I want to see, though? I want to see how, how Danny's going to overall, like, look at the weight, you know? How can I explain it? Like, for example, will he be able to buzz or hurt uh, Jose Benavidez, who was kind of tailor-made for him in regards to, well, if you look at the weight, I mean, if you look at um, the way Jose Benavidez has been fighting the last several years, well, to be honest, he doesn't really have any 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 lower body movement. He tries to block, not, not block, but be evasive with only his waist going up. He does all this shit, but his whole base would be like stuck. But he tries to be evasive with his upper body. And sometimes he'd be getting tagged up. So what does this mean? Danny Garcia being the smaller fighter, not necessarily known to be a body puncher, but Jose Benavidez is going to be there to be hit. Now, who's the sharper puncher? I'm going to say Jose Benavidez is going to be the sharper puncher. And, you know, Jose Benavidez does fight tall. You know, he does the whole pullback thing. What up, Lou DiBella? Lou DiBella. I said Lou Duva. Guys, any idea where UK folks can watch this card? That is a good question. Where is this card being broadcast over in the UK? Because the UK has been having some issues with fights for some time. Coming from PBC. What card did they put on the PBC YouTube page that was recently for UK viewers? Or will it be on fight.tv in the UK? That's a good question. Denny Garcia has a great resume. But it's kind of like some smoke and mirrors there, too. Yeah, anyone know in the UK where this card's going to be at? Here, let's go look at Danny's resume. Because I do have some um some concerns about, you know, like Danny at 154 pounds. Let's go look at it. Fight haven't picked it up yet. If they ain't pick it up now, they're probably not going to pick it up, bro. I think they're going to give it to you guys free on YouTube. They put Charlo Castaño on YouTube. Okay, they might do this at the last minute. They might do it at the last minute. But let's go look at um, Danny's resume. 36-3 with uh, 21 KOs. His run at 147 pounds. Lamont Peterson. Well, let's start with Rod Sulka, Lamont Peterson, Paulie Malinaji, Robert Guerrero, Samuel Vargas, Keith Thurman, Brandon Rio, Sean Porter, Adrian Granellos, Ivan Redcatch, Errol Spence. Now, what is his biggest win, in your opinion, 
I'm talking about his biggest, clearest win at 147 pounds. Remember the Mont Peter the the Mont Peterson win wasn't you know like clear cut, even though I had him winning. His biggest win, buddy, stop it. It's my dog. His biggest win at 147 is who? Robert Guerrero? Or would you say Adrian Granados? Because nobody can beat him clean. But at that point in time, Adrian Granados was kind of long in the tooth. Robert Guerrero, his biggest win. See, here's the thing about his resume at 147. He's got a lot of guys on here that were at the tail end of their careers. Paulie, Robert Guerrero, and fucking Brandon Rios, and even Adrian Granados, who was really a 140-pounder. The Lamont Peterson fight was supposed to... Both Rod Soka and Lamont Peterson fights were supposed to originally take place at 140. But Danny Garcia was having some real issues making that 140 pounds, hence why the Rod Soka fight happened. His biggest win definitely at 140 was uh, Lucas Matisse. That's when a lot of people thought he was going to get decapitated. And Lucas Matisse was never the, the, the same since. And then second was um, Amir Khan. But I think we all know right now that anybody with some power, you touch Amir Khan, he was going to have some issues. He did about Granados, but Granados had, you know, it, it's the thing about Granados was that like he was like he he was around for a long time, though. And he was like he was he was war torn. Let's go look at Granados. He was war torn, you know. He put on a shit show against Conor Ben. He was real war torn then, though, bro. Do you skin? I mean, me, I'm having a hard time considering this like a real quality, quality win. I don't want to say washed, but he was damn near washed. He was damn near. But, you know, 154, 154 is deep, bro. Can he hang with Tony Harrison? Did you see the war that Fandora and Lubin went through? I remember he's Danny Garcia on the height end. He's a small 154 pounder. You know, and we were we were talking about, at least I was, about how Brock Castaño's uh, height affected him. And I think that Brian Castaño would work Danny Garcia, my personal opinion, you know, because we've seen Castaño take the best and have to, and, and, and Castaño had to have the will beat out of him for him to eventually get stopped. I think that he would be able to outwork Danny Garcia. And I don't think that Danny Garcia, there's a question mark to me around Danny Garcia's power at 154 pounds. Just my personal opinion, ladies and gentlemen, you know, but when it comes to Jose Benavidez, he was doing good the very early rounds against Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford figured him out. And remember, once again, you know, he's got one leg. A lot of people felt he lost his last fight. You know, he was just looking to try to get this guy out of there with no game plan. Still, nonetheless, he lost. A lot of people, including myself, feel he got a gift over uh, Mauricio Herrera. I got that video on the channel. And isn't that crazy? You want to see how skinny T Street was? Go look up um, uh, my post-fight video. Just type in Herrera versus Benavidez. Uh, what is post-fight results or some shit, whatever I labeled it. I've been covering boxing for fucking years, bro. But ever since he got shot, you know, it's been like he went from being like a big time, like name. People were like, yo, he's going to be fucking good. And then, you know, he had that gruesome injury, man. Fucked up. Like I was real high on him. But I'm not sure. But one thing about Jose Benavidez is he's going to be there to hit. That's for sure. You know, so he's going to be there to be to be hit. But what do you think of Danny wins? Where you where is he going to go next? I'm smelling. I'm thinking, don't be surprised if they go Danny Garcia, Brian Castaño or Danny Garcia, Tony Harrison. That's where I think they're going to go. Or they might even fuck around and just go straight for the gusto, um, depending on what Charlo does after. Uh, Tim Zhu, maybe go for Danny Garcia versus Sebastian Fandora. You know, they've been floating around that. Well, not today, but there's been some rumors floating around about that.
And can you imagine Denny Garcia versus uh, Fedora? That'd be just crazy to watch. But we got to see how he does tomorrow night against um, Jose Benavidez Jr. I'm going to be here streaming during the main event for you guys are going to be here. I'm going to be here covering the whole card. I'm going to be doing a video on uh, Mel Nicky's fight, um, Sergey Derevianchenko. Uh, of course, I want to see Gary Antoine Russell knock out Rancid Bartholomew. Um, Adam Konoski, he's weighed in at, at, at the lowest he's weighed in in 12 years, weighed in at 241. Um, I Him versus uh, Demarezin, Demarezin, how do you pronounce his name, is going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to that one. And then, of course, the main event, Danny Garcia versus Jose Benavidez <coughs> Jr. So we're going to be here doing my post-fight video. Where's the, the chat's missing off the screen? Got dog it. We can't, can't win. Um, I'm going to be here for a post-fight show, and I'm going to be covering UFC. And then next week, of course, it's Asim Rahman, uh, Jake Paul and Asim Rahman. And then a week after that, Tiafima Lopez returns. It's going to be busy. It's going to be busy. It's going to be busy. So I'm going to be back at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's 1.30 now, almost 1.30 my time. I'm going to be back at 6 p.m. Eastern to talk about some other boxing topics. I forgot exactly which ones. Um, I'm going to post that link soon. And then I'm going to see you guys later. Thanks for watching. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe, and stay tuned for some news on my podcast.